My involvement in higher apprenticeships um, stemmed from work in the Kent and Medway Lifelong Learning Network, which was led by the University of Greenwich. It goes back about four to five years. Um, like all lifelong learning networks, like the Sussex one, um, we were focused on, on um, developing the progression for vocational learners. Um, in Kent and Medway, we had a particular focus on work-based learning, um, and it became apparent as, as um, reports were coming out, as a, a particular one from Hefke in 2009, uh, that was saying that um, despite the, 20, the 80 odd, 80 to 90 percent progression rate of A-level learners, despite the 40 odd percent progression rate of vocational, full-time vocational learners, um, apprentices in that report were progressing into higher ed education at the rate of 6 percent. So those were advanced apprentices with level three qualifications only uh, progressing at the rate of 6 percent. So two things we we, we, we did as a result of that. One, we set up a research project um, which was based on research that we were doing within Kent and Medway, looking at the tracking the progression of FE learners into higher education nationally, matching data sets from the ILR to the ESA data set. And so we decided to fund a, pro a research project which is just about to publish its results um, on tracking the progression of advanced level apprentices nationally, um, starting with the 2005-06 cohort, going up to 6, 7, 7, 8, 7, uh, 8 9, uh, which, is, which is sort of the last, uh, the, the, the latest, which we'll be tracking for next year into 9, 10. From that research, we actually discovered that things have moved on and that there was, not, there was an increased rate of uh, progression over that 6%, but uh, still much lower than progression for other um, uh, vocational learners, if you like. So that was one thing that we, we, we did. The other thing we did was fund some uh, work to develop with the centre um, a higher apprenticeship in engineering technology. And out of that work, we developed a, 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 a way of working which um, Ian said right from the start, or somewhere during his talk, that you, you, you can't do this work without there being a sound business case. And you can't get a sound business case without going to employers first. Um, and so we, we, we did that work by getting major employers in the Kent area, which included paper manufacturers, um, those like Eon, Thames Steel, Southeast Trains, Dover Harbour Board, range of, of, of large uh, companies like that and asked them what, what their needs were. And for a lot of them, they were finding it incredibly hard to, to recruit at levels four and five. And some of them were advertising and bringing people in from India and Pakistan with those level of qualifications. And yet they had uh, their own apprentices um, who were some of whom were progressing onto HNCs, which weren't quite doing the job for them. So with them and with CEMTA, we, we addressed that by, by putting together a, a higher apprenticeship, which, because it was prior to the SACE document, is sort of known as a pilot higher apprenticeship, but uh, and it is different to the, to the, in some respects to what, 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 what is coming out now. And we're in the second year of that higher apprenticeship. So, Two things really t in response to the lack of progression. One was um, research to find out more about it, and secondly, to actually do something like start to develop um, some apprenticeship uh, pr apprenticeships to meet that need. One of the things that a lot of those employers, those early uh, uh, engineering employers, were saying was, um, "Why should our apprentices when they've?" when we put them through an advanced apprenticeship, why should they go on to higher education? Why should they stop well-paid jobs? Some of them were earning up to £30,000 a year. Go away for three years to do a B-Eng, and then come back again. And so it was, a, it was the lack of an appropriate qualification that was, 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 was what was uh, in the way. One of the things that drove me in this work um, was the 
um, notion that if, you're, if you've got a glass ceiling for these work-based learners, people have just chosen to do study in a different way in the workplace, if you've got that glass ceiling that stops them progressing, then you're, you're doing something to stop social mobility. Um, and some of the research findings that we've got show that, that um, there is a, a real social mobility uh, angle to uh, opening up progression to um, four advanced level apprentices. 